We often hear about discounting, or in particular discounting future cash flows or discounting dividends. And of course there are valuation methods focused on discounting cash flows or dividends um, that we've talked about in other videos. And the process of discounting future cash flows or discounting dividends refers to taking those cash flows that occur in the future, for example, and bringing them back to a value for, that, that they would represent today. So it would mean taking a, a cash flow of X in one year and bringing it back to a corresponding value um, today. Now this is the opposite of compounding in a way. So if we, for example, have $100 today and we let it grow and compound, let it grow for one year 1.05, it would be 105. If we took that 105 and wanted to know what it was worth today at the same level of risk, we would take the 105 and divide it by 1 plus the interest rate or 1.05 and we would get back to 100. So discounting, whereas compounding or um, applying an interest rate to money that we have today, um, it takes money from today and, and uh, grows it into the future. Discounting means taking future cash flows and bringing them back to today. So it's actually the inverse and so instead of multiplying by 1 plus the interest rate, we're dividing by 1 plus the interest rate. Importantly, a cash flow that occurs two or three years into the, into the future isn't worth as much to us as a cash flow that we have today. So the further the cash flow occurs into the future, the more often we're dividing by 1 plus the discount rate and the smaller that cash flow will be. Much in the same way that if we have a cash flow today and we look at or some cash today and we look at what it will be worth in two years versus in one year, uh, we would expect it to be worth more in two years because we are basically letting it grow for that one more year. By getting the cash flow two years into the future, we'll, be, whether we'll, have, we'll not have had it for two years, so it will be worth less to us than if we had had it in one year and we could have put it in the bank or invested it in another, uh, in another way and made use of it for one year. So the further the cash flows occur into the future, the more often we divide by one plus the discount rate, and if it's an annual discount rate, we're going to divide by one plus the discount rate for each year that we bring it back. Um, and therefore, each of the, the cash flows, the further they occur into the future, the smaller they become and the less value they have to us today. The factor is to figure out what the appropriate discount rate is or interest rate to use in bringing these cash flows or dividends back to today. And that, uh, that, that is known as the discount rate, not to be confused with the discount rate that is often retur referred to um, by, the, by the Fed or the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, the discount rate here is, is that interest rate or that rate that is appropriate for the level of risk and the time um, that we're discounting over. And it relates very much to the risk of getting that cash flow uh, and, and the riskiness of, of, uh, of, of that cash flow. Much like if we had $100 today, we would apply a higher interest rate if we were um, to get it to an expected return going into the future um, or a higher rate. Um, we would discount future cash flows back by a higher rate um, to bring them back to today, thereby making them smaller because we're dividing by 1 plus the discount rate. So um, if we divide by 1 plus a larger number, we would get to a, a lower value for that cash flow today. And, and that is what discounting is all about. And we can do this for cash flows that occur 1, 2, 3, 4 years into the future. And of course, um, there are uncertainties with these cash flows because we can never predict exactly what will happen with a company. And clearly, there's, it's very sensitive also to the selection of the discount rate. Um, and there are numerous ways of, of, of calculating these discount rates. Um, but, and, and particularly, they would relate to the risk of, of that cash flow. And they would be based on a risk-free rate plus a risk premium to adjust for the riskiness of that investment. So for a completely risk-free investment, we would use a risk-free rate. And for any other investment that has some risk, um, which most investments are apart from um, government bonds and, for example, the United States, which are considered risk-free, the, uh, there would be a discount rate which would be higher than the risk-free rate and those cash flows would become smaller than they otherwise would when they're brought back to today. And that is the concept of discounting, effectively the inverse of making money grow into the future. We're taking future expected cash flows and bringing them back to today.